Welcome back to Paul's Tech News. We are joined here today to bear witness to the ultimate and final tech news of 2022. Once the righteous and true knowledge contained herein is bequeathed unto my most excellent viewers, the tech news will lie dormant for... I don't know, at least a fortnight, after which time it will be rebirthed into the world in a fury of ashes and flame. But enough about next year, what happened last week? Well, there was the thoroughly successful Awesome Hardware Charity livestream last weekend, a grueling and arduous day of video game playing and casual drinking to raise money for sick children, where, thanks almost exclusively to the generosity of viewers who donated, Kyle and I can say we raised more than $50,000 for Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. Normally, I am a humble man, but in this case, I will accept all accolades and thank you gifts for this monumental accomplishment. The fact that I'm recovered enough to even record tech news one week on is mostly thanks to my editor, Joe, whose godlike skills defy comprehension. He mostly cobbles the show together with a few sound bites I give him, chat GPT and deep fakes these days anyway. But the point is, this week, AMD launched the RX 7900 XT and XTX, and a handful of other interesting things happened as well. For today, though, I'm just gonna enjoy a tasty beverage in this Paul's Hardware pint glass, available at paulshardware.net. While I remind you that donations supporting our charity event are still open, as well as those gaming PC and video card giveaways. Cheers. Excellent. Today's video is brought to you by the Corsair Voyager A1600 laptop, built for gamers, streamers, and creators alike, and packing an 8-core, 16-thread AMD Ryzen 6800HS processor, Radeon RX 6800M graphics, a 240Hz 16-inch 2560 by 1600 IPS screen with FreeSync, of course, Vengeance DDR5 memory, Stream Deck functionality built in, and topped with a directional microarray and 1080p webcam. It has low-profile RGB Cherry MX mechanical switches too. The feature list goes on, you guys, so click the sponsor link in the video description for more. Before I dive into the news, kindly note that my store, paulshardware.net, is still in the midst of the holiday sale, so grab some of my high-quality merch at a discount. And you can enter these giveaways too because they're open till the 20th. I have two beautiful computers up for grabs for the US and Canada, and RTX 4080s in physical and cash form for international viewers too. You just have to visit the Extra Life Charity donation page to enter. Donations are not required. They're suggested, encouraged but not required. The review embargo for the AMD Radeon RX 7900 XT and RX 7900 XTX lifted on Monday this week, followed by the for sale on shelves launch date on Tuesday. Reception seems mixed to negative, unfortunately, but AMD has no one to blame but themselves. Outsized performance expectations were established at the announcement event back in November, where claims like a 54% performance per watt efficiency improvement and 1.5 to 1.7 times the frame rate at 4K gen on gen gave tech pundits the fuel to feed wild speculations. Even the possibility that the 7900 XTX might challenge the mighty RTX 4090. But we all should have been focusing much more closely on these two words, up to, up to 54% more performance per watt at the most ideally efficient power level, which is well below what the 7900 XTX needs for peak performance, up to 1.5 to 1.7 times faster than the 6950 XT in a few choice games that do not represent the average across a wider selection of titles. In reality, the 7900 XTX trades blows with the RTX 4080, yes, but it is also hampered by less than stellar ray tracing performance while also drawing more power. Couple this with the thousand dollar asking price and you have a recipe for disappointment. Somehow, the result of this launch seems to be a reassessment of the RTX 4080's price, which is now only 200 bucks more than the 7900 XTX, and if you're already going to pay a grand for a GPU, you might as well tack on two bills for some better ray tracing and access to DLSS features like frame generation. AMD's best bet to win over gamers at this point is price cuts, it would seem, as is often the case, but if rumors about availability or any indication, I wouldn't expect 7900 fire sales anytime soon. Both the XT and XTX sold out on the 13th when they went up for sale, but even prior to launch, multiple sources were reporting rumors of limited availability for the new Radeon GPUs. Igor's lab stated that only 10,000 AMD-made units would be for sale across the entire Europe, Middle East, and Africa region, and even fewer were available in the mainland China region because text on the RX 7900 boxes said made in Taiwan which apparently offended the sensibilities of some mewling mainland bureaucrats such that they would not allow them to be imported. 
If there is a silver lining to the launch, it's probably the third party designs that will provide much higher power limits by way of a third 8 pin power connector. Tech Power Up reviewed the Asus Tough OC RX 7900XTX and found that the modest 2% performance increase over the stock 7900XTX could be increased significantly with just a little bit of overclocking. They ran the GPU just shy of 3200 MHz on average, more than 500 MHz beyond the AMD built reference card, and managed a 23.1% better score than the RTX 4080 in Cyberpunk at 4K, and also nudging right up against that RTX 4090. Speaking of third party designs though, there are many that exist. Some are out, like the Asus Tough, or this one, the Power Color Red Devil, which I do have a follow up video on with my all red build very soon. And spoiler, yes. This is the mystery GPU that's going in that red build. And then there are some that we can only look forward to wistfully, like Yestin's anime themed cards, the Radeon RX 7900 Sakura series. They say Atlantis for some reason, which appears to be an excuse to dress the anime waifus who adorn these cards in ornately festooned bikini ensembles. And from my understanding, these cards will be able to actually absorb neckbeard thirst and then redistribute it as additional board power for maximum overclocking. And with with that, I can see no more fitting way to close out the end of the year coverage of all these blasted CPU and GPU hardware launches. We are done. The big board can be retired for now, and we've made it through the gauntlet. My goodness, I need a drink. And so soon, 2022 will be but a distant memory, but what wonders or horrors might the future bring when the new year cometh? The future will bring, of course, another overpriced NVIDIA graphics card, and it is becoming increasingly evident that the card we'll see right out of the gate in 23 will be the RTX 4070 Ti. Formerly known as the RTX 4080 12 gig, leaked benchmarks have already shown the 4070 Ti to be in the same range as the 7900 XTX in OpenCL performance, running the Geekbench 5 test suite at least, and PNY has accidentally leaked two of their variants of the card, which seem remarkably close in design and specs to the 4080 12GB versions that PNY also announced just before NVIDIA unlaunched that card back in October. 7680 CUDA cores and 12GB of GDDR6X memory, and even the same base and boost clock speeds. So clearly we're getting rebadged 4080 12GB, but will they still cost $900, or will the MSRP get unlaunched as well? And hey, wouldn't it be cool if NVIDIA just came in and like swooped AMD's RX 7900s by pricing the 4070 Ti at like 700 bucks? I mean, well, yeah, it would, but no! Don't think that, don't even try. It's a futile, an empty hope, and based on historical precedent, there's just no way NVIDIA is going to do that. In fact, what they're much more likely to do is say, f all of you consumers, the 4070 Ti is $1,200 too, just like the 4080. That's what you whiners get for talking so much crap about the RTX 4080 12 gig. We did what you wanted, changed the name, and now it's 1200 bucks. In fact, all NVIDIA graphics cards will now be 1200 bucks minimum. That's our new price floor now. Welcome to 2023. Fuck you. <laughs> Speaking of the stupid BS we constantly have to put up with in the world of PC hardware, Intel. Despite the success of their 13th gen Raptor Lake CPUs, which are quite good for gaming and actual work too, the looming threat of the LGA 1700 platform going end of life has been at least warned of in most comparisons to AMD's Ryzen 7000 series CPUs on AM5. And according to info dredged up from the Intel website itself by the fine folks at computerbase.de, those fears will be realized when 14th gen Meteor Lake S desktop processors debut sometime in 2023 or maybe 2024 using the once again all new LGA 1851 socket, meaning LGA 1700 will be dust binned as yet another two CPU generations only Intel platform. The new socket even has the same measurements as LGA 1700, although the Z height of the IHS will be a little bit taller to allow room for Intel's multi-tile design, which makes me wonder about CPU cooler compatibility, but hopefully a new set of screws will be all that's needed. The info pulled from Intel's site is just some HTML code mentioning the new socket, but the WCCF Tech article pulls in some other rumors to suggest further details about Meteor Lake. LP DDR5X 7500 memory support, at least four XE cores for the iGPU, and interestingly, no Core i9 SKUs since Intel might be reducing the maximum P core count to six from eight, while adding more E cores for 22 thread and 14 thread C 
CPU variants that can ship with 35, 65, or 125 watt TDPs. So why would there be no high core count i9s in the Meteor Lake lineup? Perhaps this is why. Intel has confirmed that Sapphire Rapids HEDT or high-end desktop workstation CPUs are coming pretty soon. And in the tech world, that probably means anywhere from one to six months. But since previous rumors pegged those CPUs to launch in February, Intel being this open and specific with a pretty soon launch window could mean yet another January 2023 launch. The new high-end desktop lineup would be dubbed the Intel 4th Gen Xeon WS series, and CPUs would slot into brand new socket LGA 4677 motherboards with W790 chipsets. CPUs could have up to 56 cores, TDPs go up to 350 watts, and you'd get DDR5 memory and PCIe Gen 5 support too. So hopefully, Finally, we'll see some AMD Threadripper competition from Intel and a resurgence of enthusiasm for monstrous consumer PCs with way more power, I.O., and yes, probably dollar values in the price tags versus their mainstream counterparts. So CES 2023 starts January 5th, and I will be in attendance, and perhaps Intel's new high-end desktop parts will debut there too. Chances are that many new products will debut, some of them more practical and some of them less so, but I'm excited to see both the sensible and the ridiculous products vendors bring to the show. One that I probably will take a look at is Cooler Master's Orb X Gaming Pod, an all-in-one desktop and monitor and chair, which was apparently inspired by the people who built those men in black chairs. This fully immersive, multi-purpose, semi-enclosed station for gamers and professionals, as Cooler Master calls it, can hold three 27-inch monitors or a single 34-inch widescreen, integrates a captain's chair with six-way adjustability, and comes in black or white, with RGB lighting as well, of course. I'm curious where the heck your computer goes in this thing, but hopefully I can figure that out and get a bead on the price, which has not been disclosed, when I take a look in person during my CES coverage. And that brings us to the show's final segment, Tech Briefs, where your sensibilities are gently teased, ever so lightly, with just the lightest feathery touch of tech news. And speaking of things that give you wood, Dimitri's review of the Fractal North case, an all-new chassis that seems to have impressed everyone in the past week or two with its style, functionality, and yes, rigid vertical segments of wood, an oak or walnut, standing tall and proud across the front panel as if to say, Look at me. I've been hard up for Hardware Canucks Dimitri's case reviews for well over a decade now. They're always well done, and when he's also covering such a striking new design, it's enough to make you so excited that you just might explode. It's even reasonably priced at 130 bucks, so if that's not enough for you to finish, I've linked his whole video in the description. Bring a towel. Intel launched their ARC graphics cards back in October, and while they're still going through some growing pains, driver updates have provided more performance, and Team Blue still seems to be hard at work getting the kinks ironed out for early adopters of these budget-friendly gaming GPUs. And now there will be more of them, thanks to Gigabyte, who is now making ARC GPUs as well. They're starting with A310 and A380 models for entry-level systems, but will likely debut A750 and A770 variants as well, making them the only AIB partner who produces cards for all three major GPU manufacturers now. AMD, NVIDIA, and Intel too. The only setback for potential buyers is that these only seem to be available in Russia and Kazakhstan for the time being. And lastly, I would like to offer a final tech brief. A thank you to all of you from all of me, as well as my editor Joe, for watching the Paul's Tech News series in 2022. It's our second year running the show, and the feedback just keeps getting better. It's an outlet for me to write and get creative, a place where I can vent my frustrations about the tech world and its often silly tendencies, and hopefully a place where you have been able to keep up with the goings-ons in the world of PC hardware, while perhaps getting a laugh or two in as well. The show will continue after a brief hiatus, likely on January 15th by my current estimates, but I do have some other videos that will go up before year's end, and of course, CES coverage the first week of January. So there you have it guys, tech news for the week and indeed tech news for the year. And if you liked it, click that like button or leave me a comment down below while you're down there. All the articles I talked about today are linked in the description if you're interested. And the holiday sale is still going strong on my store at paulshardware.net where you can get currently discounted high quality merchandise, t-shirts, hoodies, beer sets, and more. Subscribing to my channel is always a good call too. Thanks again everyone and we'll see you next year.